Tonight on The Price of Freedom, a story about a man who was born in the 1930s. His parents divorced when he was a young boy. His front room tells a story of a fascinating life. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Chattanooga. That story only gets better. Which part? East Chattanooga. Once you get the man who lives here to fill in some details. I fought my way all the way through school. I started fighting before I ever went to school. William Marvin Parks lived with his grandparents. I had a little old bicycle. I was... Seven years old, nearly seven. He wanted to move in with his other grandmother. I put my little suitcase on the handlebars and rode down from Wilder Street down on Dodson Avenue. That's just a small glimpse into a very young Marvin Parks. That sounds like a tough upbringing. It was pretty tough. Where'd you go to high school? I didn't go to high school. Tell me that story. I went to uh, Hardy Junior High School, and I went in the Marine Corps then. At that time, you could join the Marines if you were 17 and your parents signed for you. He was not 17. She signed the papers, and that was the best thing that ever happened to me, was me going in the Marine Corps. Why do you say that? Why do you say it was the best thing? Well, I was running the streets. The boy that I run with was killed while I was up at my mother's getting my papers signed. He was shot, and uh, he had my jacket on when he got shot. And uh, or I, if I hadn't have been that my mother's getting my papers signed, I would have probably got shot too. He was just 15 years old when he went to boot camp at Paris Island. Two and a half years later, he was sent to a combat zone in the Korean War. I was ready. Were you worried? No. I never was worried. He was at or near some major battles. I was in the fifth and final wave at Incheon. He was at the Chosen Reservoir. Miserable conditions, temperatures at 30 below zero. Mr. Park showed me these pictures of the Chosen Few Battle Monument near Quantico, Virginia. It's at the Marine Corps Museum. It's estimated 2,500 U.S. troops died in the battle. Some froze to death, thousands more wounded. Many didn't have food to eat because their cans of sea rations were frozen. What you would do is build a fire and put a can down beside it. And then you'd take and reach down and get a hold of that core, get it up, and gnaw off all the beans or any whatever it was off of it and then put it back in that can and burn some more. After fighting for nine months, his tank hit a landmine, severely injuring his leg that ended his time in the war. These scars have marked his body for more than 70 years. Still, Marvin Park says he found exactly what he needed in the Brotherhood of Marines. I learned a lot about life. I had friends, that uh, we went out together and we wasn't in any trouble or anything. It was just a complete change for me. And there is so much more to this story. Marvin Parks has a fascinating story about one pivotal moment in the Battle of the Chosen Reservoir. Hear that part of his story coming soon on The Price of Freedom.